You know what? We'll admit it. Playing Smash aggressively is definitely a lot of fun. But even the most aggressive players in the game need to defend themselves sometimes. To do so without simply moving away from your opponent, Smash has a variety of special defensive options that any character can use but still vary slightly from character to character. But before you put up your shield, be sure to check out ProGuides.com for updates on all of our competitive content as well as our Play With Pros platform which gives you access to top coaches and players in the game of your choice. We also recently launched our new pro course with none other than MKLeo himself, so be sure to click the link in the description to find out more about that. Now, let's learn about defensive options. The most obvious and commonly used defensive option in Smash is, of course, shielding. Shielding envelops your character in a bubble, or in some cases an egg, that protects you from any attack that should connect with it. Upon pressing any shield button, your shield will be active and can defend you on frame 1, which is the quickest any action can come out in Smash. Don't be fooled by the animation though, because the shield bubble itself isn't visible until frame 2 if no attack connects on frame 1. It, it's, it's there guys, trust me. You can hold your shield up for as long as you'd like by holding down the button, but your shield will slowly become smaller as it's out, and eventually it will break, leaving you in a very long state of vulnerability. Oh, and as a quick note on this, keep in mind that you can reduce the amount of time you're in this shield broken state by mashing. and that this state actually lasts longer the lower your damage percent is. Your shield will also get smaller by taking shield damage from attacks that hit it. Attacks hitting your shield can cause shield stun as well, which is a window of lag you undergo after it's hit. In addition to the threat of a shield break, as your shield grows smaller, it also begins to expose parts of your character's body, which despite your shield being up can still be hit if they aren't covered by the shield. This is known as a shield poke, or shield stab. To prevent this, you can actually angle your shield by gently tilting the left stick, which is made easier and more consistent by either holding two shield buttons or the special button while angling the stick. Additionally, Yoshi is immune to being shield poked, as his egg shield does not diminish in size. While shielding, you have access to a few actions known as out of shield options. By pressing A, you can execute a grab known as a shield grab. Shield grabs are a great way to punish poorly spaced moves on your shield, but do be aware that ultimate adds 4 frames of startup to your shield grab if performed right after shield stun. By pressing jump while shielding, you can jump with access to all of your aerials. This can be used to punish unsafe attacks on your shield with a fast rising aerial, or to simply jump away to escape the situation. By tapping left or right on the left stick while shielding, you can roll in or away in the direction you choose. This can be used to escape shield pressure and reset neutral at a close quarter situations. We'll talk more about rolls in depth later. By tapping down on the left stick while shielding, you can spot dodge. Spot dodging is a great way to defend yourself from grabs and can be used for many other things which we'll also cover a bit later in this video. Pressing up and B simultaneously while shielding will allow you to perform an up special out of shield. If you have a fast up special, this can be a great way to punish opponents hitting your shield and escape pressure. The reason these out of shield options are so good is because letting go of your shield will put your character in 11 frames of lag before you can act again. So choosing any of those options out of shield is about a sixth of a second faster than dropping your shield first, which makes a big difference in a fast paced game like Smash. If your shield is hit within the first 5 frames of releasing it, you will execute a perfect shield, known in the competitive community as a parry. Parrying reduces your shield stun by 3 frames and creates an attention grabbing animation with boosted hit lag for both characters, making it easier for you to both react and punish the parried attack. It's worth noting that parrying isn't possible until the shield has first been out for 3 frames, as frame 4 is the first on which shield can be dropped. Next, let's talk about rolls and spot dodges. Rolls are executed by tapping left or right on the stick and inputting shields simultaneously. A roll lets you travel a distance varying by character, left or right, with a period of intangibility in between a window of startup and a window of cooldown. There are two types of normal rolls, forward rolls and back rolls. A forward roll sends you in the direction you're facing, and turns your perspective around upon completing the roll. Forward rolls typically have 3 frames of startup with intangibility starting on frame 4, lasting for 9 to 15 frames before 14 to 16 frames of cooldown. Back rolls send you opposite the direction you're facing and maintain your original perspective. 
Backrolls also typically become intangible on frame 4 or 5, lasting for 11 to 16 frames, but have 18 to 19 frames of cooldown, making them laggier than forward rolls. Smash Ultimate introduces a staling mechanic to all forms of dodging, which decreases their efficiency the more often they're used. For rolls, this can shave as much as 4 frames off of the intangibility and add as much as 7 additional frames of cooldown. Because it offers intangibility coupled with movement, rolling is a great way to escape potentially dangerous or uncertain situations, but be careful of rolling too often or your opponent may catch on and punish the cooldown, especially if it's stale. Spot dodging allows you to quickly become intangible while standing still by inputting down and shield simultaneously. Spot dodges become intangible on frame 3 after 2 frames of startup for every character besides Bayonetta who can activate Bat Within on frame 2. Spot dodges are intangible for 12 to 16 frames, with a cooldown window of 9 to 10 frames varying by character. Spot dodges can, however, be acted out of with grounded normals or special moves 5 frames before their cooldown would otherwise end. Staling can shave up to 3 frames off the intangibility and add up to 9 frames of cooldown to spot dodges. Spot dodges have less lag than dropping shield, especially if cancelled with an attack, and they offer protection against both attacks and grabs unlike shield, so spot dodging can be a great way to quickly avoid your opponent's option and punish swiftly. Spot dodging tends to be effective after swinging a safe attack on whiff or on shield, letting you take advantage of opponents who attempt to punish what they cannot. Just be wary though, as keen players will take notice of your spot dodge patterns and wait for them. From here we take to the air with air dodges. Air dodging lets you become intangible in the air with varying startup, cooldown, and landing lag. There are two types of air dodges, neutral air dodges and directional air dodges. A neutral air dodge is performed by inputting shield in the air with no direction held on the left stick at the same time. Both air dodge types become intangible after 1-3 to three frames of startup, or 4 for Bayonetta, and neutral air dodges are intangible for 25-29 to 29 frames before a cooldown window that varies relative to how fast a character falls such that all characters regain control after falling the same distance. Because of this, Fox has the least cooldown on his air dodge as the fastest faller with the highest gravity, while Jigglypuff has the most cooldown. If you land anytime during a neutral air dodge, you'll suffer 10 frames of landing lag. This rule applies to directional air dodges as well, automatically adjusting to the direction, so regardless of direction, you'll regain control at the same height. Despite the similarity and the identical startup, directional air dodges are intangible for less time and also have universally much greater cooldown, meaning that you'll need to drop for a greater distance before regaining control after a directional air dodge. As the name suggests, a directional air dodge is performed by inputting shield in the air while holding a direction with the left stick. This will push your character in the direction you aim. Directional air dodges have 11 to 19 frames of landing lag, with higher numbers the earlier you land after inputting the air dodge. So basically, no wave dashing allowed. Any air dodge can only be used once before landing, getting hit, or grabbing a ledge, and both types of air dodges are also subject to staling, shaving frames off of the beginning and the end of the intangibility window. Staling also reduces the distance traveled by directional air dodges. Neutral air dodging has more intangibility, less cooldown, and less landing lag compared to directional air dodging, so it's generally better for landing and escaping combos. If you're high up and descending, consider fast falling right before a neutral air dodge, and also keep in mind that as soon as the dodge starts, you can control your drift with the left stick normally despite not inputting a directional air dodge. Directional air dodging offers recovery mix-ups, as you can grab the ledge with them, which is especially beneficial for Lucas and Ness who gain additional distance from their directional air dodges compared to the rest of the cast. Oh my god, it's like a third jump, look at that. Directional air dodging can also be a good escape option when the opponent is chasing you down horizontally or if you have a convenient platform nearby to dodge onto. With this knowledge, we're sure you'll be blocking, dodging, and landing better, and you'll be doing all of that even better after you subscribe to our channel here on YouTube. Oh, you're already subscribed? Well, don't stale out your time here and lose invincibility frames, and let us know what you think of the video with a comment down below.